All right, something I wanted to show you here is how I apply leverage to pull on the covering. You know, there's not a whole lot to grip here, and the iron's pretty hot. You don't want to get your fingers too close to it. But see, I want to tack it right here. In order to create some leverage, I'm going to lean it forward and use the surface that I'm working on to help hold the bottom of the piece in place. And with my fingers on the back side pushing against it, I'm going to, I'm going to push down against it with my fingers and pull back from it with my thumb and forefinger to, to keep the covering taut while I tack it. And we'll just touch the iron to that spot, give it a little rub, hold it for a few seconds. And that helps keep the covering taut to minimize the amount of wrinkles. You're going to get some wrinkling, but once we trim all this excess off and then seal the edges around, we'll run the iron over the whole surface and that'll pull all that covering tight and those wrinkles will just about completely disappear. You can see this side I already did. Now there are little wrinkle, little small wrinkles over the structure area underneath. You can see it shining through there. And the reason for that is because I laid the iron down over it and it actually it tried to adhere itself to the underlying structure. Normally you probably wouldn't want to do that just to get an aesthetically pleasing surface. You want it all nice and smooth. But this is such a lightweight airframe that the covering will actually help supply a little bit of the strength overall. And to do that, I actually want it to adhere itself to any little bit of structure underneath it to keep it nice and strong and tight. Now, we'll go ahead and trim these edges off with a sharp, sharp X-Acto knife. And the way I do it, I'll just lay a ruler over the edge. Now this, this trailing edge, I actually want it pretty close because I, I still want to be able to see my center line for hinging. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this fairly close. I may overlap my center line slightly, but it will still make it much easier to find when I go to hinge later. I won't have to cut quite as much of the covering away. And Monaco covering will quickly dull a knife blade. So you always have to have plenty of knife blades available. You're going to have a lot of scrap if you're doing it properly. And probably a lot more scrap if you're not doing it properly. Alright. And this edge we're going to we're going to leave about a quarter inch because we're actually going to wrap beyond the center point a little bit. Now this is the bottom side right now that we're covering. And when we do the top side, we'll roll it past that edge that the, that the bottom covering made so you get an overlap. And it'll keep that edge nice and nice and strong, and it won't peel up as easily as it might if you didn't have that overlap. Trim this away. One more scrap. I just throw them on the floor for the time being and pick them up later. Now at the corners, I kind of I try to bisect the angle. Put my knife tip right at the corner, and then draw away at a 45 degree. Uh, roughly 45 degree angle to those corners. This piece, I'm actually leave this piece a little long for the moment so I can pull it around this end and that's what we're going to do. Alright, again, using the work surface for leverage, pulling up with the front thumb and forefinger and pushing against it with the rest of my fingers, so we're going to pull this taut and seal it to the end grain here or the end of our horizontal stab. And then what we'll do is we'll trim that off. See, like that. And again, I use whatever I can for leverage. In this case, leaning it against my shoulder, holding the covering down against the work surface, which in this case I, I cut on a piece of glass. It makes it a lot easier. It doesn't cut your tabletop. And the glass makes the cutting a lot easier against the Monaco. And this will trim pretty close because we don't need that much around the end. Get that out of my way with the knife. And now we'll just roll this over the end. Just like that. Alright, now these corner pieces, these are going to require a little bit more trimming because we've got covering here that we don't really need. And all it does is bunch up, and it doesn't look as pretty when it's finished. So we'll cut that corner piece out, give it a little pull. Uh, 
this one will we'll cut this right at the edge. There it goes, falls right off. All right. Now we can finish sealing these edges. I'm going to lay the iron uh, in the middle area here against the edge and roll it around. Nice and slow, sealing it to the end. See there? I'll do it again here. Nice and slow, sealing it. And again here. Working out toward the tip. There we go. And in this little corner, we just seal that down against itself. Now you can see there's a little bit of wrinkling, a little bitty, you know, what a, what a woman might call the crow's feet around the eyes. Just those little bitty wrinkles. Now we'll do the same thing on the leading edge. Sealing it around, wrapping nice and slow. Make sure all the adhesive gets warmed up completely and adheres itself to the wood. All, right, all the way to the end. It's really not that difficult. Now, like I said though, I'm not an expert. There will be some visible wrinkles if you get up close to it. Hopefully not huge wrinkles that you can see from 10 feet away, but that happens too. Alright, there we go. Now what we can do, we can, get, we can make that whole sheet nice and tight like this side. And the way I'm going to do it, I'm just going to lay the iron down across it and slowly work from the center out to the wing tip, heating that covering as I go. Not, not moving too fast, but you don't really want to stop in one spot either. And the reason I'm kind of walking back and forth is I've got the iron flat against the surface and the sock that's on it kind of makes it want to stick. So to make sure I stay flat against the surface, I'm just walking it back and forth. Now, take a look at that. Nice and tight. Pretty good, huh?